You are listening to Radio Belvaspata, South Africa. This show is dedicated to those who live and love from the heart in infinite ways. In today's episode, we will discuss, share, gain insights and get clarity on the wisdom and teachings of the mystic and seer Almin, as well as discover more about the miraculous healing modality called Belvaspata. Your host for this show is Paul. Hello everyone, welcome to Radio Bell Vaspada, South Africa, broadcasting live out of Johannesburg. This is Thursday the 30th of March, it is 8pm Central African time. Thank you for joining us, if you're joining us from the Southern or the Northern Hemisphere, we are now in oneness. We are going to spend the next hour together discussing aspects of the Song of Self, we're going to be discussing music and how it transfigures us all into a different state of resurrection and ascension. This is, uh, episode is also known as the music edition. The mantra of the day is, My cells sing the song of oneness and inclusive compassion. This is by the angel Mestu Prabha. And when I read it this morning, I was really taken with the dynamic of it all and the feeling about the cells singing and the song of oneness. And this fitted in completely with our theme of the show. So as usual, the cosmos and all of us are all working together in oneness. To open up the show, what we're going to be doing is playing an audio um, that is being created by Almin as a sound elixir, and we'll be playing quite a bit of music on the show today in various formats, so we get an understanding of the dynamics around frequencies and light and how it works through music. So what we're going to have, the first track that we're going to listen to is just a short few minutes. It's called An Intro to the Eternal Garden of Discovery of the Self by the mystic Ansir Almin.
and you're back in studio. I'm your host, Paul, for this edition of Radio Belvas Batar South Africa as we talk about the Song of Self, Music and Transfiguration, a.k.a. the Music Edition. Tonight's show has uh, got some really interesting information, great insights, and I thank you for taking the time tonight to be with us and spending the hour together as a light family from around the world. It's great to have you on board. I just want to say that the uplink that we have... So you might lose a minute or two or a moment or two on the signal, but it will return if you just keep going. And uh, we're just hoping that it's listening to the. Hello everyone, my name is Nico. In July 2008, I was ordained as an oracle by the mystic and seer Almin, and this has changed my life forever, as I experience every moment in a different way. With some of my insights and information adding to the cosmic cutting-edge information that Almin share on a daily basis, I'm completely spellbound by the experiences that I get to work with. As the Valvaspata Grand Master, musician and teacher, I often find that information flows through me as I sing or play a flute or the piano. It is as if I can connect deeply on levels of experience that no one else has ever achieved. And although I have learned that at that moment these things will have no direct meaning for me, very soon I get to see the synchronicity as life alters and flows impeccably higher and higher. I enjoy working with our means teachings and how quietly I am allowed to experience the insights and clarity gain on a daily basis. I'm fully supported in the inner work I do. And as a founding member of Team Bavaspata Healing South Africa, I'm privileged to get to work alongside some powerful masters and healers who are consciously walking their journey for themselves and riding the cutting-edge cosmic information with gratitude and love. Bhavaspata as a healing modality has ancient roots. It is an angelic, life-altering experience that is helpful with a specific goal and aim of reducing thoughts, belief patterns, internal programming and external and internal distractions. Until there is a sense of purity, of consciousness, or simply of being at one with all that is. From this state, many things can outflow, from of which can be quite healing. Used over time, Balvaspata has a beautiful and useful effect, and will connect to many functioning systems, in particularly the life force of the physical body, whilst also supporting the emotional and psychological systems as well. I'm also currently studying for an international degree in music and I'm finding that the insights I gain from the interaction with the students I'm working with to achieve this degree is most beneficial for me as I get to see the bigger picture of all involved. I do not live a surface life and prefer to acknowledge the depth and worth of a life of expanded vision and an open heart. 
Practicing Bhavaspata teachings and I mean wisdom have allowed me to live the life of a warrior, yet remaining open to so many other aspects as life brings it up to look at. Our means teachings are not for the faint hearted, but do allow for the inner softness and gentleness that spiritual maturity brings as we work with the magic that what each day offers one. For us to live in a heart centered consciousness means that we will need to change everything we ever thought or felt we were, and whilst this can be daunting to many, it is with great delight that I can say that the support we have for each other is wonderful. Being part of a worldwide light family is delightful, as we all meet, greet and see each other individual offerings, yet still able to maintain a wide open heart, respect and love for what unfolds on a day-to-day -day level. I can highly recommend the practice of the miraculous healing modality called Balvaspata, as well as other Amin teachings. Initiating into Bhavaspata or receiving a healing session is like being in the company of a beautiful angelic beings and linking one's heart to love, light and powerful shifts in one's perception and vision. Our reality is changing so rapidly since the end of 2012. That is in its enormous blessing to have a healing modality that changes within.
wanted to go on together you know in, in one level and fascinating is that she came along and she brought a flute with her and gave it to him and it's ordained with the most beautiful Native American beadwork and as she gave it to him she said here you are here's a gift from um, a Native American chief who makes flutes um, and he makes flutes as oracles so and he only makes three to four flutes a year they're personally made and he had one that he had made and he didn't know who um, it was going to be given to he didn't know who it was for that he was making it for and when he gave it to our friend Terry um, she came and gave it to Nico and said here you are the Native American chief who made this says you will know what to do with it um, and that
creativity to create mm-hmm. the the music for me. Right. And that I think that is where that comes in for me. And then we can look at the Teta stage, mm-hmm. which is the forming stage. Mm-hmm. Um, sleep stage, mm-hmm. and I think they call it the, the REM sleep, mem- sleep time. Okay. And that, incre- yeah, that increased the production of, or increase, increased the creativity within our brains. Right. Uh, and that is also... That is what I was talking about earlier. It's like my inner ear or my inner vision, my mm. inner mind. Mm. Hear the music and it can translate it very quickly into the physical. Mm. That is a very deep trans, um, non-physical state. Normally, you don't ha- you're not aware of your body. But in some cases, I think we are aware of what we're actually doing mm. within our dream state. And that acts as the unconsciousness and collective unconscious mind mm. where things get created for us. So that takes us beyond the surface of awareness on any level and takes us beyond just active thought and active activity. Uh, act a strange word, but it takes us beyond that state of activity into, Absolutely. into I think you're calling it a dreamless state? Dreamless state. Because yes. the earlier one was REM sleep and things like that. Correct, yes. So each of them are different ways of being awake or Mm. half awake, fully asleep, Mm. deep, deep sleep. And they all connected in in the process of creating song. And that's why I call them the creations. They are the creations brainwave. So you're saying within your understanding and the way of you practice things is that each one of these frequency bands, because let's say the alpha or the beta and theta, and some say theta, some say theta, theta uh, bands, they, they have bands of frequency. There's a range of frequency between each one. You know that it goes at so each one has its own ability to create in terms of its frequency levels I definitely think so mm-hmm. they definitely connected through different frequencies okay. in, in, in the whole in the whole spiel if I can put it but that most way. of us are primarily in the beta wave condition correct okay so this opens up a whole can of worms for us which maybe we'll discuss in a few minutes and talk about the different aspects of of creation around um, frequencies Okay. Uh, you know, it was very interesting as I, I talk, look at one of our teachers that we have in the school, Tyron, um, where, you know, when we first met him and he was talking about why he loves to perform on stage because as he hits a guitar string or something, you know, as he plucks that string or he hits it, he actually sees waves of energy moving out from the center of his fingers out into the audience. And he says he can actually manipulate that um, wave of energy that bubble of energy and you can add heart into it so that everybody feels the emotion of music so I mean, he understands that that frequency as well i wonder how common this is for musicians around the world we'd love to hear from mm. that. i think most musicians are so connected on emotional mm. but also because it's passion mm. and it's also part of creation for them mm. i think that all is connected for each one and they do feel the frequency and the change mm-hmm. of music. I find it very interesting that you're discussing that each one is a type of creation. Mm. And when we look at the different levels of, of resurrection and ascension that we all go through, like, and the different levels of light, because each frequency has to be light, right? Correct. So it really means on a very deep
must be a lot of fun. (laughs) Okay, so predominantly what we really want to talk about tonight is the understandings of how light and frequency uh, influence music and therefore influence healing. Mm. Because we already know from the sound healers out there, we already know from the work that the Seer and Almin has done is that just the aspect of some of the music is incredibly healing by itself. And some of the sound elixirs that she's produced have been profoundly incredible in terms of creating miracles for people. The stories are just so beautiful to listen. So what we're going to do now is we're going to listen to the mystic and Seer Almin as she explains new revelations about her own personal sound elixirs that she creates and what the difference is between an elixir of light. Um, so we're going to listen to that in a moment or two. And then also we're going to do, um, just look at this, how um, to release suppressed emotions, maybe through music and through some of these aspects. That sounds so good. let's listen to Almin, new revelations about her personal sound elixirs. The track is about two years old, but uh, still very relevant in terms of music and sound frequencies. We have continually said that nothing is as it seems. In the life of appearances, in the dream, the unfortunate truth is that usually that which seems lofty and praiseworthy hides something that lies beyond that makes it unreal. On this journey that we have been walking, The pleasant surprise is that indeed nothing is as it seems. It is so much more. And I would like to address now the products of sound elixirs and light elixirs. The sound elixirs and light elixirs have a very specific combination of white light and sound, which we cognitively are aware of, and black light and sound, which comes from the attitudes that are imbued throughout the music. Well, the black light can be described as the light of inner space, the black sound as well, of inner space. At death, we enter into the experience of the soul, which is inner space. During life, we live the experience of the body, which is outer space, white light, white sound. We have been saying that by combining these, we eliminate illusion in an ongoing way throughout our life. Sometimes people ask for an additional sound elixir for a purpose in their life, but in general, these are for your life. So what we did not say, however, and this is the good news behind the appearances, is just how much more this does. When you learn to walk with one foot in white light and sound and one foot in black light and sound, you will find that you are actually walking the way of a resurrected being. So simply, without having said, has combined There we were listening to
one foot in the elixir of white light and one foot in the elixir of the black light, the black light yeah. uh, you're actually balancing and grounding yourself perfectly, grounding and in the heavens, heavens and the earth, as it were, per but se. It was a state balance, yeah. I think, yeah. Well, I mean, there was also talking about the inner and outer space, and I just want to let you know that next week, uh, the first week of April, we're going to be listening to a pre-recording that Diane will be making for us about inner and outer space, and we're going to be talking about how the masculine and feminine work with that. Last week, we discussed some of the seven principles of the feminine, so we're going to be developing those discussions as we're going along. A lot of this information is coming out in the recent Almin webinars that's being facilitated by the Russian Light family very, very aptly, and so incredible to watch on light workers um, today or, or was it yesterday? Can't remember that Almin was absolutely delighted that the master Sergei had actually created a sound elixir for himself that contained the black and the white light. letting it burst. I am experiencing extreme emotion and do not know what to do. I have fear about it and it scares me. Any insight would be of great benefit. So Almin's answer. The dam consists of all the emotions we couldn't handle and so suppressed. The second level of resurrection releases them. Just feel them and observe them moving through your body and out of the soles of your feet. Afterwards, take a bath with one cup of Epsom salt added. So we are trying to also use tonight's program, an episode of Radio Belvas Pata South Africa, to add to that healing journey for everybody and play music for us all. And let us just listen to the Alexas, listen to the power of the music. Having a master musician like Nico with us is of great benefit as well. And as we develop all of that, it's going to be completely incredible. But uh, Nico and I were talking earlier about these four categories of brainwave patterns that came out. And he came up with an idea there. And he thought he's just beginning to realize the different aspects of the internal or inner work that we're all doing with these uh friend of ours, that, that pop star friend of ours, who says that music is going nowhere and he's waiting for the new level of music to come out is so accurate. Um, and that says to me,
when I look at the beta state, I couldn't come up with anything better than the warrior. Because for me, that's the one that's alert. That's the one that watches mm, everything. Mm. So if I put it in that kind of terms for well, me... Category, yeah. The beta, the beta is definitely the warrior for and me. And the warrior is a creator as well. Because absolutely it forges creator. new paths and Correct. cuts away the old paths. Fighting the way through. Yeah, sometimes, very much so. And then when I look at the alpha state, I really had to think about this. This was the mental creation that I said earlier with the, the voice and the instrumentation. Okay. That for me is someone that's smooth, soft, gentle. Mm. That was the nurturer for mm. me. So, so kind of like the backtrack to the lyric. Would that kind of fit? Because the nurturer offers the, the support and the It's the support. The yes. background. I would definitely say yes. That, okay. that could be the backtrack. Okay. Because the nurture is someone that focus on everybody's needs sometimes mm. and then help them along to actually get to where they need to be. <laughs> so I definitely said that alpha, I could... now to some more music by the Asir Almin. Uh, we used to open the show by the way everyone. Sound Alexa by Talking Drums.
And there we were listening to Sound Elixir Healing Music by the Sheer Almin. It was the Bell Vaspata Healing of the Angels music and also Talking Drums. These are sound elixirs that contain both white and black light. And again, two different kinds of music in a way, um, but absolutely beautiful. And with Almin singing in the background, really, really touching. I love using her music in the healing abilities. You know, Nico, earlier this week I had a client... Uh, um, for Belvas but our healing and as we were discussing the process we were talking about the merging of the left and right brain and I was really saying to this particular person that I feel from her she is one who is living in the midbrain as these things occur and she understood that fully she'd never been around any of the teachings that we're talking about any of the healing she hasn't followed that um, on any level of, of any healing, but yet she fully understood why she couldn't fit in to the crowd of people or her family. And that was really an interesting thing that you brought up earlier where you were saying left and right. Mm. But this is also aspects where inner and outer space are, um, are combining because we cannot have separation in a world of oneness. There's individuation there in terms of an expression of the infinite's intent but there is never a state of separation when we are in a full state of oneness. That's great, yeah. So we're going to talk a little bit about um, something else now, which is also close to Nico, and this is Bill Vaspita's Song of the Self, and I think he, he enjoys that because of the aspects of the music that is used within it and the frequencies of the wheels and sigils that are going on. So tell us about what you feel song of the self means to you as a, as a healing modality as a healing modality for me i think before i just i want to read something that i mean to say about uh, song of the self mm -hmm. but i think for me looking at bavas the song of the self why it resonates so strong with me is when i look at the overall modality or th i see it as a therapy okay. and when i do do the the sigils and the wheels and all of that that mm -hmm. work that's involved it's like i'm in a different space it's like nothing exists for me it's just mm -hmm. me my bubble and it's funny how when i read and i'm going to read what i mean say um, about song of self and it will make more sense where i'm going i mean say pain is caused by the illusion of separation separation is caused when parts of the body do not emit their harmonious frequencies do not sing their song Unsung songs lie like shadows in the etheric body. This body of Balvasvata is specifically designed to release the hold of separation, separation caused mm. by unexpressed frequencies. frequencies. And I think when she talk about separation, it's like, I don't want to say I separate myself from everybody, mm. but that separation for me is, it's me time, but it's my spiritual time. That's when I really connect I think on a spiritual level for myself and working with all the frequencies that is put out in Baba's Buddha Song of Self, for me it's like expressing fully all um, when all the frequencies are available to mm. to to the Baba's Buddha Song of Self. A complete judgment moment here from me, but I know some people who are in Delta sleep 100% of the time, <laughs> and some people who are in that alpha stage, you know, they just go, 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 you know, the, the Duracell bunny kind of person, mm. and that's what they're expressing, that is the frequency that they resonate to you, but what we're saying here is as we, um, you know, separation is caused by unexpressed frequencies we can't keep going just down the same road it all has to come together come together so yeah. it, you know i'm fascinated to hear that you feeling that this is part of the journey and this is what your students are also experiencing because there's a, as you were saying earlier there's a psychology of the music mm. um, and of emotion that you are working with um, and having studied psychology before and knowing that within your um, teaching diplomas that you're working with at the moment, you have to work with all of these. So your students are obviously getting the benefit of it. Um, and tell us a little bit more about what you're teaching those students in terms of expressing themselves fully. When, well, every student is unique. Um, I'm working with five amazing students in my class and each one of them are so unique. They, I think they run different frequencies and sometimes mm. with their emotion or experiences of life, Sometimes they don't understand where they're going for themselves. Okay. And then what I do, I actually go deeper with them into the deeper psychological parts, but without losing the spiritual aspect of it. Like I said earlier, I bring a lot of the four sub-personalities into, mm. into play when I teach. Um, for them to understand that this is a growing phase. This is, they're growing through the process to become 
the artist they dream to be but we all have deeper psychological aspects that we've got to work with like disappointment or let's call it the fear of uh, what's the word I'm looking for abandonment or rejection so for me working through those processes where they release or let go of the old patterns and then starting on new patterns that will help them grow as non, not just as a human or but also as a spiritual being yeah. and then through the music how they can express themselves on stage off stage and just be who they are mm. that that beautiful person they need to be so, so, and nurture the audience Absolutely. by sending out that light or that frequency that that touches great so for me it's is. always been when you sing from stage and you sing from your heart and your emotion it's got to touch someone mm. it's there's a message there's a storyline and i think that is where I want to see them when they tell the story, it's mm. more than just a story that we're telling. It's got to touch someone out there. Well, you've brought in a, a audio that you recorded from one of your students. Uh, tell us a little bit about her. Um, what I did with my students, I asked them each to make a project task and a research task. And I gave them each a genre. And I specifically talk about this one student she bring her task and it was nothing that i expected because if i give you for example rock stage they're going to build the stage mm. with drums and lights and her genre was contemporary classic and she keep telling me she's going to put a twist and she's going to put a twist in but i also know that she's very spiritual of nature and when she bring her, t her project it was in this beautiful box she had plants in the box and at first I had to stare at this for a while and like trying to figure out where the music fits in. But when she started explaining from her point where it comes in, I would like to play the MP3 just now where I recorded her. Uh, you'll see in a, and understand where she's coming from with the project. As musicians, we have to flow. We have to, it's, we got to be part of that frequency, mm -hmm. part of that mm -hmm. flow for us to be creative, to express, to show our emotions. And I think she put it beautifully in terms of her project that was built in the box. And the box is what the world put us into. And if you look at the plants, the plants is the flow of where we're going okay. um, and the growth that we're going through wow. as artists or spiritual beings mm. being in the master music. So, so I just want to introduce her and then uh, you can play that sure. audio. And her name is Amber. Um, and she's an amazing student. I really enjoy her energy. She's always excited about stuff, so I'm definitely going to play her, her track right now, and I hope you enjoy this. Well, hopefully we get to hear a song of hers too soon. I definitely hope so too. <laughs> the box which my project has uh, been built in represents the box that society puts us in. The same box which we accept being put in. Um, it also represents the man-made parts of music, the production of music. However, the music that is in the end produced has the opposite effect of the box. This music that's produced it, um, is represented in the organic form of the plants in my project. Plants can sprout even in the darkest places, um, even thriving in the darkness. This darkness being our subconscious mind. The music starts sprouting and changing things without us even realizing. That's why I say that music transcends language and that it speaks to the soul. No matter what the language the music is put across in, you still feel the same incredible things. Wow, such depth eh? from such a young person. Absolutely beautiful. And I'm sure she expresses that musically. We are going to see so much more develop. I think we need to bring your students onto the radio show now and again and let them share their understandings of this journey of healing as they express the frequency of who they are and who they develop into by allowing deeper frequencies mm -hmm. because that's really what we're talking about. Here. Absolutely, yeah. And so, it's so hand in hand with what we're talking and it's so connected where we go. Yeah, very <laughs> Specifically very around so. Bob Aspita, mm -hmm. um, Song of the Self. Oh, fantastic. Okay, so there we've covered a lot tonight. Um, thanks for staying with us, everyone. We'd just like to just play for you another version or what's called the scratch vocal recording. It means it's a, it's a reworked version of Nico's song, Stratkin, so the South Africans would understand that as, um, re, as meaning street child. And for those in other continents along the way, the song is in the Afrikaans language. But please listen to the frequency as Nick has been playing the music and sending it out. People have been saying they break down in tears at the beauty of 
the words, the beauty of the feelings that is being produced. And I think this is what really Nico is describing tonight is the ability to create that frequency of emotion that touches people and then allows them to accept a different frequency. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if there's different forms of sound elixirs coming into here on a subconscious or unconscious level, but I'm not able to define that. Perhaps uh, the Sia Almin will one day tell us because she has a copy of this as well. Um, so let's listen to Nico again. Please remember this is not a recorded version in terms of a professional studio. We haven't yet done that. Um, but what is going to be coming out here is the new work to backtrack that he did with it and then the lyrics that go with that song. So we're going to close off with this, but we'll see you on the other side of it. Fantastic song, Nico. Well done. I think the lyrics and the backtrack really great. And uh, I look forward to the recorded version next week. And of course, there's a music video we're also doing. That's correct. So that'll be fantastic. Yeah, great song of heart and great song all around the inner child, actually. Definitely. Uh, yeah. Really working with all of it. Really fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us on Radio Belvas Patar today. So there for you, you doubled up, you were on the radio and you did the sound desk. So everyone, thank you for staying with us. Uh, it's now 
uh, 70 minutes into the show. It's time to end off. Uh, hopefully you've stayed with us, but we know the uplink wasn't very, very strong tonight. Uh, Wi-Fi issues here and there, but that's the way it goes for us. And uh, yeah, thank you for staying with us. Next week we'll be discussing all things, including butterflies, inner and outer space, merging of the masculine and feminine, and lots more beside that. Please join us next week for the next sparkling and fun episode of Radio Bell Vaspata South Africa. This is your host Paul signing out and saying goodbye, love, praise, gratitude and surrender trust. Until next week, goodbye. You've been listening to Radio Balbaspata, South Africa. Thank you for listening and sharing in our discussion. Should you have any questions with regards to the healing modality of Balbaspata or have any healing needs, please send us an email to info at balbaspata.co.za or add comments to our page on speaker.com so we can work on providing a suitable response. We now close this episode with the eternal ascension qualities of love, praise, gratitude and trust and look forward to sharing again with you next week. Goodbye.